People don't often realize that skin cancer is the most common cancer diagnosed in the United States, which means it's more common than breast cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, and colon cancer combined. It's thought that one in five Americans will develop skin cancer at some point in their lifetime. Melanoma is the most serious and the most dangerous type of skin cancer. And although it only comprises about 4% of new skin cancer cases, it accounts for over 75% of skin cancer related deaths. Before I talk about melanoma, I wanna briefly mention the non-melanoma skin cancers. They are incredibly common, but fortunately they're not very serious. So there's basal cell carcinoma, which accounts for about 80% of new skin cancers. There's squamous cell carcinoma, which is the second most common type. And then there's melanoma, which is the most dangerous type of skin cancer. Something that makes skin cancer so unique is there is a dichotomy between early and advanced diagnosis. We have an ability to detect skin cancer at a still curable stage because skin cancer develops on the skin, so there are often signs for us to see. If you don't diagnose skin cancer at an early stage, it develops the potential to become much more serious. Melanoma, for example, which is the most serious type of skin cancer, when it's caught early, the cure rate is about 99% or higher. But once melanoma is left to invade into the skin and gain access to the blood vessels and the lymphatic system, it develops potential to metastasize or spread throughout the body. And that's when melanoma can become so serious or even deadly. So as dermatologists, it's our job to educate people for what to look for on their skin. Because if you see a sign of a suspicious mole or something changing, the sooner you can get into a dermatologist to have it evaluated and possibly biopsied, the sooner that treatment can be initiated. So when we talk about melanoma, we look for signs of potentially a mole that starts to change or a new spot that exhibits some unusual characteristics. We talk to our patients about the A, B, C, D, E's of melanoma. And what these refer to are signs that you can look for in a spot on your skin that may suggest that it needs evaluation and a biopsy to rule out the possibility of melanoma. A is for asymmetry. So when we look at common benign moles, they're usually very symmetric. They might be round or oval, but if you draw a line down the middle, they often create matching symmetrical halves. B is for border irregularity. So a common benign mole often has a smooth border, whereas a melanoma might have jagged borders, irregular borders, notched borders, scalloped borders. So if something is changing and no longer appears smooth, it should be evaluated. C is for color variability. So again, benign moles often are evenly pigmented. They might be light brown or dark brown, tan, but if you start to see black or various colors within the same mole, perhaps a mole that used to be evenly light brown, develops shades of black within it, even signs of red, white, and sometimes blue you can see in the skin. So any change in color signs should also be evaluated. D for many years stood for diameter. So if you have a mole that is growing, expanding, that is much larger than the other moles, it should be evaluated. More recently, we talk about D for darkness though, because sometimes even from across the room, you'll see that one mole that jumps out, it's very heavily pigmented, very dark. That could be a sign of melanoma as well. And E, which is probably the most important, is for evolution or change. So if you notice one of your moles changing, whether it's with the A, B, C, D, or whether something just doesn't look right or it's suddenly becoming symptomatic, but something is changing about that mole, that's often a sign that it warrants a biopsy and further evaluation. The thing people should realize is that the sooner they can get that changing mole or suspicious mole evaluated, the better the chance is for cure. Melanoma is a very unusual cancer. When it is caught early, it's often treated in a dermatologist's office like my own with an excision, which is a local surgery with a wide and deep margin. But the prognosis for melanoma directly correlates with the depth of that lesion. So when we diagnose a melanoma, the pathologist will look under the microscope and evaluate how far in millimeters or even fractions of a millimeter, how far that melanoma evades into the skin. If that melanoma invades past one millimeter in depth, at that point it is no longer treated by a dermatologist and it's often referred out to a surgeon who will do the procedure in an operating room, 
often in conjunction with removing a lymph node to determine if the melanoma has already spread to that lymph node. If the melanoma spreads or is metastatic, at that point an oncologist would be consulted to determine when he, whether or not any additional therapy is indicated. In the past, we used chemotherapy, radiation therapy. Melanoma proved to be a very smart tumor and it often evaded typical treatments. So thankfully, over the past few years, there have been many advances in the field of immunotherapy and there have been new treatments that are used to help use our own immune system to fight melanoma. The take home message about melanoma though is that it is often curable when it's caught early. Unlike many other cancers, it's also largely preventable. So this is where I talk to my patients, it is never too late to start protecting your skin. Even if maybe when you were younger, you were outside and didn't wear sun protection, it's very important to protect your skin now because we know that up to 90% of melanomas are associated with unprotected sun exposure. We also know that having had burns during childhood increase one chances of getting melanoma. So five or more sunburns or any blistering sunburns during childhood. Additionally, the use of indoor tanning beds, which increase one's chance of melanoma by up to 75%. So we know that this unprotected sun exposure and the use of tanning beds are directly carcinogenic. So if you have a history of that in your childhood or adolescence or your adulthood, make sure you mention that to your dermatologist because that directly increases your risk of developing melanoma. But I tell patients it's never too late to start protecting yourselves, stay out of tanning beds, use regular daily SPF 30 or higher, and most importantly, familiarize yourself with your own spots because if you notice one of those signs of changing A, B, C, D, E, make sure that you have that lesion evaluated by a dermatologist because early biopsy can lead to early diagnosis and early diagnosis can save lives. Melanoma is the most dangerous type of skin cancer, but when it's caught early, it's almost always curable and it is largely preventable by good sun habits. While skin cancer is definitely more common in fair-skinned individuals, people with light skin, light hairs, especially those with light eyes, freckling, sunburns in their past, that group is at highest risk, but we are seeing an increase in skin cancers among all ethnicities, all skin types, there's a particular type of melanoma that's common in dark-skinned individuals. We see it in African-Americans, often on the soles of their feet, the palms of their hands. We see skin cancer sometimes under the nail beds. Some types of skin cancer, like squamous cell carcinoma, can be associated with the HPV virus. So we see that sometimes on the genitalia, and it doesn't matter what your skin type is. As far as the age range for melanoma, it's interesting. We see a definite peak in young women. So we think this is largely related to tanning habits. Young women are more likely to use indoor tanning beds, which we know are directly carcinogenic. So we see a spike in women in their 20s. After the 40s, men are at increased risk for melanoma. And an interesting fact is that oftentimes when men are diagnosed with melanoma, it's at a later stage. Part of this might be because they're less likely to pay attention to their skin, maybe less likely to know when something is changing, maybe a little delayed in getting in to see a dermatologist. Just one thing to mention about anatomic distribution, this is not always the case because as we discussed, you can see melanoma anywhere, but melanoma is very common in areas of sun exposure. And for some reason, women are more likely to get melanoma on the legs and men often get it on their upper chest and upper back. So that's definitely a distribution that we see but the non-melanoma skin cancers, which are more a product of this chronic sun damage, so we see basal and squamous cell carcinoma on the head and neck, on the backs of the hands, those are areas exposed every day, you know, day in, day out. Melanomas, interestingly, occur on areas that are exposed for these intense bursts of sun exposure, but oftentimes those areas are covered for most of the year. So for example, if you're going to a sunny vacation or you're going to an indoor tanning bed, which I hope you're not, you're exposing skin that's not always exposed. So those mutations are different from the chronic mutations you occur on the areas that are exposed every day. So you do wanna cover up, you wanna practice good sun behavior and definitely stay out of tanning beds. It's important to familiarize yourself with your own moles, but we recommend that every adult over the age of 18 see a dermatologist for an annual skin examination. And if you have had a skin cancer or a family history of melanoma or one of the risk factors like the intense sunburns as a child or indoor tanning, 
then you should see a dermatologist every six months. But when you are familiarizing yourself with your own moles, which you should do, it's sometimes hard to see areas like your back, the back of your ears. So it's a good idea if you have someone, a partner or someone living with you, if they can inspect the areas you don't see, that could be helpful. There was one paper published that men oftentimes came in because their partner or spouse noticed the changing spot and that often led to a diagnosis of melanoma. So certainly check your own body, use a handheld mirror if possible, ask your partner to take a look, but remember to go in and see a dermatologist, a board certified dermatologist once every year to have your skin professionally evaluated. As we've gotten better at diagnosing melanoma at an early stage, it's been very helpful to have some tools at our disposal. So most of us dermatologists carry a pocket dermatoscope, which is an illumination magnifier with a light, and it helps us to see specific changes on the surface of a mole that might not be as readily apparent to the naked human eye. Furthermore, now that most of us use electronic medical records and we can have digital images at our disposal, we'll often take pictures of moles, and when the patient comes back every year to have their moles checked, it's really helpful to have these pictures so we can compare and contrast to see if the mole has changed in size, in borders, in colors, in symmetry, and see if possibly something may require a skin biopsy for further evaluation. Although skin cancer is the most common cancer diagnosed in the United States, and although melanoma is very serious and can be very dangerous, the good news about melanoma is that when it's caught early, it's almost always curable. By increasing awareness and educating the public about skin cancer, Molly's Fund and the Begain family have really made an effort and have succeeded in saving lives. People are going in to see a dermatologist, they're having that chance at early detection of melanoma, and when melanoma is caught early, it can be cured. Mm -hmm.